In the name of Christ Jesus of Nazareth, yes, amen, amen, amen. Yes, so, yes, amen. Good morning. Yes, amen, amen. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, good morning, YouTube fam. Good morning, Facebook fam. Good morning, LOR Radio family. Hey, good morning, Sister Irma G. And <laughs> We haven't, I haven't spoken to Sister Imogene, it seems like in years, I don't know, it's been a while, wow, but, okay, okay, so God be the glory, God be praised, good morning Carl, good morning uh, Reverend Love, good morning Pastor Hanlon, and good morning everyone, good morning Ija, I'm not seeing anyone, but I'm just going to say good morning to everyone, because Folks are always telling me they're on. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Cecile. Good morning, everyone. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Pastor Paul. Whoever watches this message, whatever time this message you reaches you, Pastor Shazad and all the others. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, good tomorrow, because some people are already in tomorrow. God be praised. Amen. This morning's message is entitled, God's Word is Not Ancient. It's everlasting and teeming with life. Hallelujah, glory to God. Bishop, I don't know about you, but you ever notice little children? You ever talk to kids? <laughs> I remember one time I was at church, right? Because I, I did, I taught children's ministry, right? So I did children's Bible hour, and I also did cradle roll. And cradle roll is zero through three, right? But we had um, we had the children's Bible hour, which was five, ages five through was it eleven? Or, or I think they're about or nine, nine or ten. Listen, Bishop. Sometimes they would look at someone and say, "Hey, good morning, Sister Dene. How you do? I see you. I see you. I see you too, Bishop." Yeah. <clears throat> so. They would, they would look at folks, right? Like the kids that are like in their 20s or, you know, like 18. And they go, you're old. <laughs> no, seriously. Little kids. So you can just imagine when they see folks that are really like in their 80s and 90s, what they think. Like some, some kids don't say it. But let me tell you, some kids think people who are even in their 40s and 50s are ancient. <laughs> kids will say the darndest thing. It's true. They will say this. They will look at them and say, oh, you're so old. You're so ancient. Like, how old are you? Like, kids. And it's so innocent, right? But it's perspective, right? Is what I'm getting at. Because some folks you'll find like have you ever gone antiquing it's not a word have you ever gone to look for antiques some folks appreciate old furniture old things that are older right yesterday i um i passed by uh this gentleman's uh shop you know there are not a lot of those around remember those mom and pop shop they have some things in there i'm telling you like some little for some valuable for some priceless for others it means nothing because when it comes to the age of technology some folks is all about that but you know listen i always say pen and paper can't beat that 
because <laughs> technology can fail. Am I right or not, Bishop? You know, I learned early necessity is the mother of invention, right? It's an idiom that I learned. And so the thing is, you have to learn to make do. Like when electric sharpness came. Now, how many of you, like if you're from Jamaica and other islands, I'm sure have done this, that you used to sharpen a pencil with a what, Bishop? A knife, right? Not a pencil sharpener. I, You know, it amazes me how the youth today, especially millennials, right? Certain things, they they like they cannot function they get headaches quite easily they get overwhelmed quite easily and, but when you think about it we have to teach our children you know how to to live going camping you know it's, it's it, we may take these things for granted learning about the leaves and the trees and how to if you get lost you know which way is north without a compass these are things I learned in Pathfinder, right? My kids learned that. But growing up in Jamaica, there are so many valuable things that I learned that it, it makes me look at life differently is what I'm saying. And so, you know, I've, I've spoken to folks that says, oh, the word of God is ancient. <laughs> when, when folks start saying the word of God is ancient, you know where they're going with that, right? means it's lost its value for some right but nothing could be farther from the truth when it comes to god's word god's word is not ancient it's everlasting okay it's before us it's after us and will continue into eternity god's word is also teeming with life like the ocean teems with fishes the word of god the Bible says those who find God's word finds what? Life. It's a life to our flesh and health to our bones. Hallelujah. In the book of Proverbs, it tells us that. When we find the word of God, we find life. You ever notice, you ever notice when you're not feeling well, when your mind is unsound or unclear? All you need to do is pick up God's word. Open the word of God and read it. And you start to feel what? Better start to feel alive. Or even if you can't read it, you can listen to the word of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, the word of God was at the beginning of time. It was before time. And the word of God has not lost its power. Wherever God's word flows, life flows abundantly. Ezekiel 47 and 9 tells us that living things go where the rivers flow. Wherever there's the Holy Spirit of God, there has to be life. Come on. Is he within you? It's the power of God within us. We have, come on, sons and daughters of God. We need to, to, to really know who we are in Christ, whose we are. And, and I keep saying this. When we don't know our spiritual right, when we do not understand the spiritual laws and truths of God we live defeated lives but when we know the truth of God the Bible tells us his truth sets us free his truth liberates us his truth empowers us hallelujah glory to God so you see John 10 and 10 B tells us Jesus came to bring life and to bring it more abundantly he came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly Jesus is the word made flesh right that's what the Bible tells us isn't it in the book of John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh are you believing sons and daughters of God what you read are you believing God's word God's word is not only teeming with life, it's teeming with truth because the word of God is truth. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine. Hi, Will, how are you? Listen, a lot of times I find that as believers, listen to what we're called, believers, we're sons and daughters of God. 
yet, you know, um, Pastor Hanlon was te is teaching a series on faith. And I, he couldn't have chosen a better topic because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He's really liberating people with his teaching, really. Because listen, so many times, I don't know about you, Bishop, but going out into the world, meeting God's children, oh my goodness, there is so much hopelessness. And it comes because many times and I'm talking about even children of God who, who know God, right, or are supposed to know God, put their trust in mankind and in the systems of the world. And so when the systems fail, when mankind fail them, who do they blame? God. But then they never put their trust in God to begin with. Because when we put our trust in God, listen, he's going to tell us, he's going to navigate us through our life's journey. He will tell us what to do, where to go, what to eat, what not to eat, when to sleep, how much rest to get. He teaches us how to be empowered in this life so we can fulfill the purpose that we were born for. Each and every one of us are born with purpose. Each and every one of us are born with purpose, Bishop. Each and every one of us are born with purpose, Danette. Thank you for writing that down. And so, listen, we cannot do it without God's words. God's words are here. The Bible, they're here. It's alive. The Word of God is, is oh, well, Lord have mercy. Mm. Did you ever notice that wherever Jesus, the Word, walked, life flourished? Let's go back to the pages of the Bible. Wherever the word walked, life flourished. God's words are constant. And they continue to be full of the power of God. Since forever. Since today. Forever, today, and forever. Like, there is no, there are no beginning and there's no ending with God's word. Come on. So, you see... I saw how Yeshua Jesus restored life wherever he walked, wherever life was dwindling or totally gone. What did he do? He restored life. You see, I once read this, that no word of God is devoid of power. They are only powerless when unspoken. Now, I agree with the first part, that no word of God is devoid of power. But the second part, I don't quite agree with, okay? I believe that God's words are filled with power, whether we speak them or not. However, when we plug them, uh, when we plug them into our spirit, we experience the life and the full power that they are filled with. Let me ask you something. Is there current, you know, like when, when, when you plug, when you turn on the light, right? When you turn on the light, was there, was, is there power when the light is off? The power is still there. However, you have to flip the switch to see the power that was there. Because I tell you what, you would not want to put your hand in a socket if your hand is wet, right? You wouldn't want to do it. You would learn the hard way that there is power there. Well, God's words are filled with power and life, teeming with life. However, when we're not applying them to our lives, because the Bible says, blessed are those who what? Read the word of God. Blessed are those who hear the word of God being read. What does it mean? To, mm -hmm, yes, Bishop. <laughs> yes, you're right. Bishop just said, even if your hands are with and you put, it's true. It's true because of the power that is there. Well, God's God's word. When, when, when you pick up your Bible, how do you see it as another book? Or you say, my goodness, this is a life-filled, teeming with power, 
word of God, but because the Bible says so, okay? That when we pick it up, we're, we're oh, hey, hallelujah, glory. Come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. You see, God's words bring us abundant life. God's words liberate us. God's words cleanses us. Every time God's words are spoken, life, life comes. Hallelujah. Glory. I don't know about you. Oh, Bishop. <laughs> Tanette, girl. <laughs> yes, baby. Yes. Hallelujah. The word of God, it restores the areas of our lives. Now, I want to go back to the Word of God because, you know, the evidence is in the Word. <laughs> the Bible tells us that those who find His Word finds the life. The Word of God is, is, is here as evidence, right? Now, first person I want to talk about is, he was called Blind Bartimaeus, right? In his case, Jesus spoke life to his eyes. Why? Because his eyes were devoid of life. His eyes had no life in it. If it was blind, that means it wasn't fulfilling its purpose. That means the life of the eyes were no longer functional. True or false? Can we agree with that? And so, what Jesus did when Jesus saw that this man's eyes was devoid of life, he spoke life to his eyes. You can read, you can read Mark 10, verses 46 through 52. Mark 10, 46 through 52. You see, Bartimaeus, actually that wasn't his name, because Bar means son. So he was the son of Timaeus. They didn't even, God didn't even give his name. And I find it interesting, when God doesn't give a name, right, it means, listen, it applies to any one of us, right? So, here was the son of Timaeus. He was a beggar. Why? Because he was blind. Why? Because his eyes had no life in it. Bishop, you ever think about your body? And let me ask you people, just, just anyone out there, seriously, do you ever think... Listen, when sickness comes, it comes to rob life. The Bible said the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. When things start going wrong, you know, that's life. That's the enemy of us trying to rob the life away. So Bartimaeus, uh, the son of Timaeus, right? He, his eyes had no life in them. I'm, I'm talking about some eyes today. <laughs> Until he met the life giver. You see, when he met the life giver, life giver returned life to the eyes of Timaeus. However, the Bible, John 10, 10b, as I said, said the life giver, the word, came to give life and life more abundantly. So when the life giver spoke life to his eyes, he not only gave life to, Bar to Timaeus, the son of Timaeus' eyes, he restored Timaeus to his family because he was a beggar. He was out there in the streets. You know how that is, right? Today, we have many homeless folks on the streets that have been separated from their families because things happen to them in life. Many people look down on them not realizing that, listen, in life things happen. Things happen to folks. Some folks might have been drugs, might have been alcohol. Some folks was hard times. Some folks were displaced from their homes. Some folks were put out of their homes. I can't tell you the number of people I have met in this here United States of America that said they came. Family members sent for them, but they gave them one week. Some gave them two weeks. Some gave them three weeks to get a job. Now you know, not everyone is, uh, uh, you know, are, are blessed enough at the time to get a job in three weeks or even a week. There are folks that would say, "Listen, you're here for a week. After a week, get out. After two weeks, get out." 
after three weeks get out so really highly blessed are you who your family members have allowed you to stay with them and work okay until you get on your feet and the Bible tells us we must love our brothers as ourselves but not so not so not so with everyone but when the Word of God is working in your life listen it fills you with love and it fills you with compassion we saw how Jesus the word the word that became flesh became what he was filled with compassion and love and so he could never leave his brothers and sisters the same way that he saw them I pray that that's the truth for us as well and so when Bar uh, the son of Tobias received life to his eyes it liberated him his life became full and whole because now he could work the Bible tells us an interesting thing he threw off the cloak that he had on that was the beggar's cloak that was put on him because he knew he was going to be liberated hallelujah glory to God now the Bible tells us that we are to put off the old man and put on the new how many of us are wearing Jesus today how many are wearing the word of God that became flesh we have the written word we have the spoken word we have the manifested word and the word of God is supposed to manifest at all times hallelujah glory to God and so today when we read God's word aloud life is being imparted to us sons and daughters of God and we have to see it that way no longer pick up the word and just 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 read read you know Bishop my grandmother did something for me that I never appreciated when I was younger honestly I didn't I didn't right I didn't get it she used to say read the word of God aloud but I was one I like to read in my mind so I was, she said no read it out aloud and it wasn't because I couldn't read and it wasn't because she didn't think I was reading but she always said speak God's word out aloud that's what she'd say and I never got it it took years before I grasped the truth of what the, of, of, she was empowering me and I didn't realize it at the time we ought to read God's word out aloud. And I tell folks, sometimes because the enemy of our souls, there are times when we can get this book combobulated and, and we, we get a little bit, just, just uh, we, we, you, you ever pick up your Bible, Bishop? Yeah, no, no let, let's get real because we're real people, right? And God knows we're real. Jesus lived on earth. He understands that the Bible said there is a, a, a person seated at the right hand of our heavenly above as man in a body right because he was born right and restored he has the restored body hallelujah glory to God he understands fully what we went through and so he intercedes for us and he is the word he is the word come on he is the word he is the word and so listen when sometimes when we're going through difficulties sometimes when problems whether it's health financial judicial we can get consumed with that we, we just we just think that over racial disparities racism injustices huh? abuse when we live certain things in life our, our minds can get fractured and our focus can be displaced the Bible tells us we ought to focus on the things of God whatever things are lovely good and true on the Word of God on Christ Jesus however can we attest to the fact that there are times when things happen all we can think about is the thing is the thing that the crisis whatever is happening and so even if we pick up our Bible sometimes to read it well let me just talk about myself because I've been there I picked up my Bible to read it let me tell you something I've read the one sentence 
all four, five, six times, and it didn't make sense. I was like, what am I reading? What am I? That's how my mind was, right? <laughs> I had to stop and say, word of God, now, come. I had to read it out aloud. That, that's where, when I, I put my grandmother's words to practice. The moment I started to read it aloud, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Huh? Hallelujah, glory to God. So when we read the word of God aloud, life is being imparted to us because as we're hearing, we become filled with faith. We become filled with the life that God's words bring. Jesus himself said this in John 6 and 63. Human effort accomplishes nothing. What did Jesus say? It's not Florencia saying this now. It's not Flo saying this now. Jesus says, you can read it for yourself. Human effort accomplishes nothing. I'm reading the New Living Translation. And the very words, hear what Jesus says, the very words that I have spoken to you are what? Spirit and life. The word of God are alive. The thing is, the words we speak, they come to life. That's why the Bible said we must have forward mouth. You know what a forward mouth is? A forward mouth is a mouth that speaks anything against the knowledge of God and of Jesus and who they are. Because forward mouth defeats us. Having a forward mouth defeats you. When you start speaking the negative thing, when God says do not say, he said let the weak say I am strong, did he not? The Bible even tells us that we must say we're sick. Did you know it's in the word of God? Oh, the sickness is trying to overtake the body. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So how about applying the word of God to the situation? God's words are teeming it with life. And we ought to speak his word. To ourselves, to our families, to our situation. Whatever the situation is, there's a word. There is absolutely a word. Jessica isn't on here right now, but she could tell you. She went and did a treatment. The treatment left her in so much pain. The next morning, sons and daughters of God, hear me. This young lady, a young young lady in her 30s, this young lady couldn't see out of one of her eyes and the other was going dim. Do you know God had a scripture for her? And before, what that, what's that saying Bishop was saying? Before the night is over, before the day is through? Before, before the day is over, before, before the night is through. Well, within a matter of hours, she was seen after reading, hearing the word of God being read to her because she couldn't see to read it. So I read it to her. She started getting her vision back so she could actually read the word for herself. She could give you her own testimony. Sons and daughters of God, the word of God is filled with life. It's teeming with life. When I say teeming, I mean it's overflowing. Jesus said, I came that you might have what life and life abundantly. Wherever Jesus went, abundant life flowed. All right. So we talk about the son of Timaeus. How about the blind man who was brought to Jesus at Bethsaida? Life had left his eyes. See, he could see, and then life left his eyes. He had to be led around. He was dependent on others to take him places. Now, you know when you have to be dependent on people? Let me tell you something. If you have family members who treat you well, 
give God thanks for them. Pray for them. Ask Him to bless them at all times. Okay? Because there are people. Let me tell you something. There are people. I remember having to leave my house to go to someone else's house to help them. Why? Because the people in the house wouldn't do it. You know some kids are kind of a little bit wayward. They're going to do what pleases themselves first before they help others. But the Bible tells us whatever we don't want for ourselves, we mustn't do it for others. We must not do it to others. And so this blind man at Bethsaida, he had been robbed of his independence. See, he could no longer take himself around. Independence had been robbed from his life. So Jesus, look what Jesus did. Jesus led him up. By the way, his his his, his I, I wrote about this in in in, in um, as for the days of trees so are we. Jesus led him out of town. Jesus spat on his eyes and asked them, "Could he see? What did he see? Say, he see men walking as trees, right?" Then Jesus touched his eyes again. And he saw clearly. Jesus led this man out of his environment. Right? And he applied. He had to touch his eyes twice. For the life to be brought back to his eyes. What am I saying to us? What is God's word saying to us this morning? Then Jesus directed him where to go. Remember Jesus said no. You know. This is where you go. Right? Right? Sometimes when we read the word of God, we're not going to be fully imbued with the word of God. Let's say you're looking for healing. You might go to the word of God and you're reading a scripture. And I say to you, ask God what word he has for you. Because sometimes we take it up on ourselves and we're like, oh, okay, let me look for this word. You know God can heal you with a scripture that you never eat. It doesn't even talk about healing in it. That shows you how full of life and power the Word of God is. We just need to ask God. See, we're not dependent on God. The Bible says, lean not to, in Proverbs, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, you must acknowledge God. Does all mean all? In our eating, our sleeping, our speaking, our walking, our talking, our living, our laughing, our driving, our everything we do. Ask God. Unfortunately, we like to, well, I got this. You know, the, the, I have the, the other folks, you know, that say, I got this. And then, do they? You know, kids like to do that. I remember years ago when I was a little girl, I, I myself had said that. My grandmother was teaching me something. I said, no, 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 I got it. I'll do it. And she backed off. She did. She didn't say another word. She was like, go ahead. She was teaching me how to bake. I made such a mess. And do you know the love my grandmother had for me? It, it was potato pudding. Can I tell you? I wasted it. She had to throw it out. Because we couldn't eat it. It would probably have been food poisoned. Can I, I can't begin to tell you the stuff I put in it. My grandmother, she said, okay, now do you want me to teach you how to make it? Started from scratch. Well, what she did, though, instead of letting the helper grate the potatoes, she had me grate it this time. I learned my lesson the hard way. But I say that to say that we need the Word of God to teach us. We need God to teach us. We need to read his word. We need to stay in the word because his words are teeming with life, as I said. And so sometimes you read the word of God once and you don't see anything happen. You went to the word of God about a judicial issue, about an economic issue, 
about a spiritual issue, about a physical issue, about a life issue. Nothing. Do you give up? No. You go back again. Maybe later, the next day. We ought, we ought to read the Word of God every day. We can read it more than once. Okay? Go back. Ask God again. What word? Sometimes He'll give you the same word. I'll never, and my kids could tell you, and I say this all the time. Bishop, don't I say this all the time? When God gave us the scripture, those who pity the poor lends to the Lord and He will repay. Ask my kids. Week one, week two. <laughs> the kids were like, Mommy, same scripture. Same scripture, baby, because clearly we didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but when and, and can I tell you I, I said it but I tell you something when God dissected that scripture for my family and I none of us can forget it and it's many messages oh you may just take it at face value but it's much deeper that's what happens when we spend time in the word of God hallelujah glory to God and so we need to read God's word more than once. Jesus showed us. See, whatever the Bible reveals to us, the Bible tells us it's to liberate us. Isn't that what it's there for? The truths that have been revealed to us are for our benefit, to liberate us, right? So when Jesus made the second application, there are times we need to go back to the word of God make another application with the Word of God. It's not that the Word of God isn't effective. Where is our faith? What, there are times, there are things that needs to be worked out of us. Let me ask you a question. Okay, no, let me not ask you. Let me just say this, because I remember when God said to me, in His Word, he was having me read these scriptures, right? But I wasn't getting it. Seriously, I wasn't getting it. I, I, you know, I wasn't. I just wasn't. So listen. And the Lord said to me, I, I was like, Lord, what are you saying? Because, you know, we, we have to talk to him. He says, come reason with me. So I said, Lord, I'm not getting it. What are you saying? And he said, you're full of pride. Now, can I tell you, full of pride? Now, if... If you've known me since I was a little girl, basically I'm the same person, right? But there there are differences in my life today, though. Because I used to be shy. Seriously, and I always used to say this. So if you know me before, I used to say, I'm so shy. I'm so, oh, no, I can't do it. I'm so shy. No. The Lord said, that's pride. I said, what? Can't be. How's that pride? I'm shy. He said, who are you relying on? If I tell you to go do something, if I tell you to go speak, why are you telling me you are shy? That means you're full of pride. And I was. So when all the scriptures he was giving me, he was trying to work pride out of me, but I wasn't getting it. Because I still went around going, oh, I'm so shy. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, you know, and being fearful. But when I got it, I realized, wait a minute, you give me something to say, I have something, then let me go in Christ. Not I, but Christ. Listen, it's not my words, it's yours, Lord. So let me let you just uh, open my mouth, you just speak through me. Made such a difference in my life. So I say that to say, there are times when God needs to work and, and not everybody everybody we are all differently different and even God works with us differently sometimes it's sometimes we don't even have to pray about the issue that we're going through all we need to say is you know what daddy handle it and it's handled there are other times we have to take to our knees huh but God so Jesus made a second application in order for life to flow in this man's eyes again. And when he did, the man was liberated. Notice 
the Bible said he was led to Jesus. He was taken to Jesus. But when life came back to his eyes, life, his independence came back to him. Because the Bible said Jesus told him where to go. The Bible didn't say he was led away. The Bible said Jesus said, now you go there instead of going over there. And he went there. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, God's words applied to our lives brings forth independence, brings forth freedom. Hallelujah, glory to God. God's words frees us from the things that had us bound. Hallelujah, glory to God. You know how wonderful it is to be free? Can I tell you, I don't remember the scripture that it was that I gave to a young man one day. But I gave this young man the scripture, a scripture. And the young man said to me, what does it mean? And I explained to him. And he said, you know, he said when he got the scripture, he was going to throw it away. He said, but something, and I said, that was the Holy Spirit. But his words to me were something. I said, no. So I had walked away and he actually came back to me. Do you know that young man said he had been in jail for a while and he was let out. And he said he wasn't adapting well to society. And he thought that he had to go back to jail. But I told him that when God's words freeze him, it frees him indeed. And I said, nothing beats your freedom. Now, this is before he explained to me. He explained to me about being in jail after. After I explained to him the scripture. Because I was telling him that the word of God frees us. It liberates us. And when God words, God's word frees us, it means we're not bound to anything. Nothing can hold us in bondage. And I, I, you know, I was sharing with him how I used to tell my students when I used to teach them. That if you don't listen to the authoritative voices that you hear that are instructing you to do right, if you don't listen to your parents, if you don't listen to your teachers, then the system, the law, will bind you, put you in jail, and they will dictate to you when to eat, when to sleep, when to shower. I said, nothing beats freedom. And when I told him that, he said, you don't know how you just freed me. It wasn't me who freed him, it was the word of God. Because he said he was planning on doing something to go back to jail. He said, but uh-uh. He said now he's gonna, he was going to do his endeavor best never to go back. Perspective. Word of God frees us. We need to know that. God's words fill fills us with his life with his power and frees us in the process from the things that had us bound hallelujah glory to God now you know when the Lord gave me this message I was wondering why Jesus and there's more to it trust and, and you know as, as, as we re-listen we'll find God will unfold more truths because I thought, many of us don't think of that. That sometimes there's an issue in one tiny part of our body. And we don't realize that, wait a minute, there's no life there. We need to apply life. And some folks have pain in the hips, pain in the knees, pain in the joint. Not realize that the enemy of our soul, sin, 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 brought sickness and pain, arthritis and stuff to rob us of life. You think about this. If, if, if you have an ulcer, right? Or, or, or some kind of esophageal issue. Not, not something serious, but, but, but serious enough. It robs you of eating the fruits and vegetables that you could ingest. To bring life, the Bible says the, the, the heat leaves are for the healing of the nation and, and the fruit and the foods, right? Beneficial to our bodies. But what 
And, and let me tell you, the word applied to our lives, to our situations. Let me, there, is God's, there is a word for everything. You have an ulcer, there's a word in here for that. Hallelujah, glory to God. Diabetes, there's a word in the, here. Huh? Hypertension, word in here. Lupus, I'm telling you. All we need to do is go to God and say, Father, this thing. So anyway, talk about some more eyes here. Hallelujah, glory to God. Now, there's another uh, 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 account of this gentleman that Jesus brought life to his eyes. And he never had life in his eyes at all. Bible says he was born without, he was born blind. So he had no sight at all. But when the word that was filled with life, filled with love, filled with compassion, crossed his path, that changed and life came to his eyes. Interestingly, I find. That how Jesus did that? He combined some spittle with the earth. The very earth from which mankind was made. The Bible said that God took earth to form Adam. Remember that? Remember this, right? So when, as I reread this story, and I've read this story for years, but this time, as I, this is how, the, see the word of God is always teeming with life and new revelation, by the way. This time as I read it, I saw the symbolization of God breathing his breath into Adam. You see the combination of the spittle and the earth from which Adam came. Oh, hallelujah. Life. Come on. Those who find God's word finds life. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, Pastor Shazar. Thank you, Lord God. And so, Jesus, see, when God breathed his breath into earth, formed man, man became a living soul. Life came. Hallelujah, glory. And so, Jesus put the, 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 the spittle and the earth on his eyes and sent him to the pool of Siloam. By the way, Siloam means sense anyway. And life came to his eyes. Isn't God's word amazing? Hallelujah. <laughs> you may have an area in your life that is lacking life and you're not sure why. You don't know. You know, some things you can put a finger on. You can put a finger on the pulse of what caused the thing. You know what I'm saying. Maybe you didn't eat right uh, over the years. Maybe you ate on the run, you know, and you develop a situation with your stomach. But God says, I'll heal it, okay? But then there are things that you're like, it's perplexing. I remember once, i never forget this. <laughs> um, I took my mom. Actually, I did forget it, but the Holy Spirit just reminded me of it. I had taken my mom to the doctor and you know she was going through a series of things. my mom had fallen in the street and she shook up her insides and it caused a whole slew of issues she had to see the nephrologist the I can't even begin to tell you the number of doctors it was like pretty much every week there were two or three different doctors that she had to see and this happened for a while it, 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 like they didn't know what was going on so I used to take my daughter's uh, DVD player and I used to have uh, the gospel I had Matthew and Mark and Luke but I, I loved Matthew so I always used to bring Matthew and this particular day um, I, you know we're playing it and we're sitting there and suddenly my mom said you know what Everything is going to be all right. 
and, and it, the Matthew had a Jesus that always was smiling. I love, I, I really love that. It was the Bible. It, it, it was the actors just um, acted out the Bible. It wasn't like they were improvising. It was the word, like they would read the word or speak the word, quote the same scriptures. And so my mom says, you know, <laughs> when I was talking about Jesus healing the sick, she's like, it's going to be all right. And sure enough, she got good news that day. But here's the thing. There was a gentleman that was sitting across from us. And he said, what is that you're listening to? And I told him. But he could hear it. So he came to the, to the same side as us. And he was like, man. And he's like, that guy is Jesus? He said, I never saw Jesus as someone who would smile. And I, I thought, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, but think about it. For most of us, right? We never think of Jesus as, we think of Jesus as stern and angry or, anyway, that's how he was portrayed to many of us. And so he was sitting there and he said, he gave this testimony before we left because we actually left him there, but he gave this testimony. He said he had been going to the doctor and taking tests, doing MRIs, and a series, a barrage of whatever, and nobody could tell him what was wrong with him. But the thing is, he said he kept feeling worse and worse and worse. But nobody, the blood tests, the, 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 all the tests they were doing weren't revealing anything. But he said as he was sitting there listening to the scripture, he started to feel better. So when we came back out of the doctor's office, he told us, he said he feels he's going to have a good report because he said that was the best he felt in months by just listening to the word of God. I am telling you, sons and daughters of God, the Word of God is spirit and it's alive and it's teeming with life. It has not lost its power. It is not ancient. It is everlasting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, if you can't put your finger on whatever is happening to you, know that God is sending you to read His Word because he sent his word to bring you life. Hallelujah, glory to God. And to heal you and to deliver your life from death and destruction. Read Psalm 107 and 20. He said, I sent my word to heal you and deliver your life from destruction. Another version said to deliver your, your soul from the gates of hell, from the gates of death. And a grave. Hallelujah, glory to God. Now, don't you want to just run and read the word of God? <laughs> I don't know about you. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. So, listen. Not only did the walking word bring life to dead, blinded eyes, he restored other areas of people's lives. He restored other areas of even those who were blind. Do you ever notice? When God heals one part of your body, He liberates you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He brought life to dead limbs and to dead bodies as well. You see, when God sends His everlasting word to heal, heal it must. Do you understand this? I have to repeat this. I feel in my spirit. I'm a, when God sends his everlasting word to heal, heal it must. It cannot return void to God reporting that, you know what, I, could, I did not accomplish. Bible says his word cannot return void. See, Jesus fulfilled his mission. Jesus the manifested word. Jesus, the word who became flesh. Jesus, the word that was tried in the earth and purified seven times over. Jesus came on a no-fail mission. 
and God's word, God's written word, cannot fail as well, cannot return void unto him. Hallelujah, glory to God. God's word cannot fail its mission. In Mark chapter 3, when Jesus saw a man with a deformed hand that hindered him from being fully productive, Jesus had chosen the Sabbath day to heal the man's withered hand. You know what Jesus proved to us? How hypocritical we are. We can be very hypocritical when it comes to the quality of life. It's okay for some of us to live good lives, but not for others, right? They were like, don't heal the man because they didn't need healing. How many of us are like that today? And we, we, the word of God, as I said, it's not ancient, it's everlasting. It applies to us today as well. Okay? But listen, in God's eyes, he says, I send the rain on the just and the unjust. There are scriptures of portions of the Bible that says, whosoever. Who is whosoever? Whosoever. And so, time and opportunity has been made equal for all who wants to spend eternity with God. Time and opportunity has been made equal for those who go to the Word of God to be filled with the life of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. The same Word who healed and delivered that man is still powerfully healing many today as well. Because the power of God's Word to heal is eternal. It's not ancient. It's not in the past. Is very present. Says he's a present help. Hallelujah, glory to God. His word brings life to all areas that are affected. And this is an eternal order. See why the word of God cannot return void to God? Oh, come on. I, I, I honestly truly hope you're getting it. I hope we're getting it, sons and daughters of God. I truly hope we're getting in. You see, the life that is in God's word is greater than death. The life that is in God's word is greater than death. Jesus showed us this. He showed us that the power of God's words were just as effective whether life was leaving or it had totally gone. Whether it had left one little part of the body or it had left the entire body. Whether it had left for an hour or it had left for days. The word of God stopped an old woman whose life was slowly being drained from her body because the life of the flesh is in the blood. So, Jesus restored her when her faith grabbed a hold of the life that was in the Word. The Bible said her faith grabbed a hold to the life that was in him. And he said virtue went out of him. She was no longer going to bleed out. She could go forth and be productive. You see, her social life was restored as well. Because prior to her healing, she was shunned from society. She was also cleansed because wherever she sat or whatever she touched was considered unclean. Do you see the power of God's word and how it's teeming with life? Hallelujah, glory to God. And then after the word gave life to this old woman, it gave life to a young girl who had died. An abundant life was restored to her family's joy. He restored the little girl. He also restored Lazarus who had died for four days. See, it didn't matter whether it was hours or days. And he restored the their family. The word of God is restorative, sons and daughters of God. Apply it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Then, there was a day when the word visited a village of beauty and pleasantness 
the city was called Nain. That's what it means. Beauty and pleasantness. But guess what? Jesus didn't see the beauty. He did not see life. He did not see the beauty of life there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I should say, he didn't see it, but hallelujah, glory to God, he was going to make a change. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He didn't see beauty, the life of beauty and pleasantness. Instead, he saw death, he saw sorrow and mourning. But, what does the word of God He who finds the word finds life, sons and daughters of God. He never left it that way. He stopped the funeral procession, procession, glory to God, and gave the widow her son back. You see, when he did that, he restored the breadwinner to that family. He restored, he, he took the, the pain and sorrow out of the mother's heart and those who mourned with her, and he gave them all joy. And so the mourning turned to a celebration. Hallelujah, glory to God. If you're mourning the loss of a job, a marriage, or you've lost something valuable, life giver Yeshua Jesus, the word of God will give it back to you. Go to the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He will restore your joy. Hallelujah. By the way, you can read Luke 8, 40 through 55, Luke 7, 11 through 17, just just go into the word hallelujah glory to God and then I could go from Genesis to Revelation to show you the word of God is teeming with life but these are a few that the Holy Spirit had selected and now we're going to talk about the woman another Sabbath healing the woman that was bent over she was loosed from the infirmity that had her bound you see, she had been robbed of life in standing up straight. She was bent over. You might be bound by arthritic pain. You might be bound by sciatic nerve pain, pain in your joints. That's robbing you of life. That's causing you to limp or lean in on one side or be bent over. Know that. Where was she healed? In the temple. When you go to church, or when you open up the word, for you, the, the Bible tells us that we are the church, right? So when you open, but in, in the assembly, in the assembly of, of the saints, when, when folks are gathered together, do, do, the air, because sometimes, sometimes when we are alone, the enemy of our souls, you know, there is strength in unity, because sometimes when we are alone, what happens? He likes to divide and conquer. Do you ever notice um, a nat National Geographic? The lion or predators, do you ever notice most of the time they never attack a healthy herd or a healthy pack? What do they do? They stalk out the weak link. They stalk out the straggler. They stalk out the one that's left behind. Am I telling truth, Bishop? We can all attest to this. Sons and daughters of God, in the assembling of the brethren, getting together, singing songs of praise, we are encouraged, we are strengthened. This woman got her healing in the church. And I honestly believe this is what the church ought to be today. I, I, I honestly, I, I remember when I was a young girl going to church, people would come into church sick and leave well, seriously. Like after singing and praising, you'd literally know they came in sick. Sometimes they would say it, some other times you would see it. But oh, when church was over. And I wonder, where is that today? I pray that's still evident today, right? That when we go into church, when we hear the word of God being preached, that our faith are strengthened and we are healed. The Bible said, remember when Paul, was it Paul was preaching? Paul and Peter and the apostles were preaching. There was a man that was sitting, listening to them over and over, over and over. And guess what? The Bible tells us, none of them prayed for him. 
The man got healed hearing the word of God. I believe the same is true because God's word has not lost its power. God's word is not the void of power. It is teeming with life. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so, God's word today will loose you from the death of pain that limits your mobility. The word of God will restore life to your bones and your joints just the way he did for that daughter of God. God is not slack concerning his promises, sons and daughters of God. His word is eternal. They're not made for one century and not for another. His words were aforetime. And they will continue on into eternity. Glory to God. And we won't need the healing then. Because we'll just live the eternal, health, eternally healthy and joyful life. Glory to God. You see, what God did for those accounts that we read in the pages of the Bible he will do the same for you today he will restore you hallelujah glory to God God's word as I said is filled with abundant life it's overflowing it's superfluous it's, 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 it's just teeming it's just bubbling over with life that will restore whatever has been robbed from you. Spend some time in the pages of the Word of God, the written Word. The written Word is teeming with life. The Bible says, have you never thought it a curious thing to say, those who find His Word finds life? Excuse me. And not just any life, but abundant life. God did not create us for us to walk around sick and defeated, defeated by humanity, defeated by trials and tribulation, scared and running around, not having a sense of direction. No. You know, Bishop said something the other day. What did you say? I posted it on my page. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my God. Like, God didn't save us for us to, um, to to go around without a sense of direction. Or I can't. I'll look for it and, and repost it. I posted it. The point is, God created us with sound mind. He created us healthily. Because of sin, sickness and disease entered the world. Because of sin, there's poverty. Because of sin, there's crime. Because of sin, there's stress. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Wait, was he talking about in the air after? Because in the air after, we'll be all right. Well, that's in, in eternity. <laughs> there's no need for healing or any of that. Right now, sons and daughters of God, the word of God is everlastingly filled, overflowing with life, overflowing with love and compassion, overflowing with blessings untold. Open the pages of your, your, your Bible. Read the written, effective, overflowing Word of God that is filled with life. The life that was and power that was aforetime is still present today. It's present and it's accessible. Believe God when you open the word. Trust them to give you what you need. Each day he gives us daily blessing. Trust him to give you what you need for today. Sufficient are the blessings of today. God be praised. Have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Know that I do love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves all of us so much more. Have a blessed and a wonderful day. Go forth. Read the word. Allow the life of God to fill your body. Fill your life. Fill your organs. Fill your cells. Fill your muscles. Fill your, your knees, your nose, your tongue. Whatever needs the life of God today. Fill Fail the bones, the arteries, the, 
the 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 marrow fill everything whatever needs life today i pray when you open the pages of the word that the word of god will come alive in your life in jesus name and for his sake amen all righty take it oh good morning pastor blake hey tashoy <laughs> girl i don't see you yes we are meant for community yes we are hallelujah glory to god hey pastor blake how you doing yes God's word, Danette, is not the void of power. God's word, sons and daughters of God, is not the void of power at all, at all, at all. It is filled with power. It is filled with life. Read his word today. Glory to God. All right. Take care, everyone. Be blessed. Thanks, Bishop. Thanks, LOR Radio, YouTube. And by the way, share the messages, and I will upload it to my YouTube channel. I am Flo. F L O Shangajita on my YouTube channel. All right, take care.